When precision is the difference between mission success and catastrophe, meet Lorai Israel's long-range surgical strike missile that alters the battlefield calculus. Fast, stealthy, and brutally accurate, it gives planners a new standoff option. Stay with us. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we examine Lorai, the long-range artillery rocket ballistic missile system developed by Israel, and explain why it matters. LARA stands for Long Range Artillery, and it represents a leap in the ability to strike fixed, high value targets from hundreds of kilometers away with remarkable precision. In this opening section, we will outline what LORA is, its role in modern strike doctrine, and the strategic consequences of having such a capability. LORA is designed as a ground launched road mobile precision strike weapon that complements air and naval strike options by offering a survivable lower signature alternative for certain mission sets. Its architecture typically pairs a compact, solid propellant booster with a guided terminal vehicle capable of maneuvering and adjusting its aim point. That combination gives commanders the option to hold at risk hardened or time sensitive targets while reducing exposure of manned aircraft and complex logistics. We will also touch on export and operational considerations showing how LORA fits into layered strike and deterrent strategies. This overview will also touch on export controls operational doctrines and how LORA fits within layered strike architectures we will not only describe hardware and specs, but also discuss tactics, operational trade-offs, and strategic messaging. Throughout the sections, expect clear explanations balanced with technical detail suitable for enthusiasts and professionals alike. LORI's development traces back to Israel Aerospace Industries IOAI programs that prioritize compact, Road mobile precision strike capabilities for regional contingencies. The design requirements emphasized range, accuracy, and the ability to operate from dispersed launch positions with minimal preparation. Development included iterative testing to refine booster performance, flight control software, guidance suits, and terminal seekers. Engineers balanced payload mass, structural toughness, and thermal protection to permit repeatable accuracy across climatic and operational conditions. Confidential trials and classified exercises likely validated survivability against battlefield threats and allowed tuning of launch procedures. Partnerships with allied suppliers and domestic defense firms helped integrate advanced navigation and communications modules, while mission planning tools matured to support rapid target upload and replanning in contested environments. Part of LORA's appeal is modularity. Mission planners can select flight profiles, terminal behaviors, and warhead types to match objectives ranging from precise infrastructure strikes to bunker defeat. IAI's industrial heritage in guided munitions and space-grade guidance hardware provided a technical backbone. IA leveraged lessons from earlier Israeli rocket and missile efforts to refine guidance, propulsion, and warhead options. Partnerships with allied manufacturers and classified trials likely refined the flight control and survivability features. Development included testing for accuracy, reliability, and deployment in varied environmental conditions. Because LOAR fills a specific niche, it complements existing air and sea launch systems rather than replacing them. Technically, Lauer A is reported to achieve stand off ranges on the order of a few hundred kilometers, depending on variant and profile, offering a mid range strike option between short range artillery and long range cruise missiles. The system typically employs a solid propellant booster to accelerate the guided vehicle and place it on a pre planned trajectory. The terminal vehicle uses guidance updates and in-flight maneuvering to refine accuracy and defeat point defenses. Reported guidance packages combine high-grade inertial navigation systems, INS with satellite navigation aids. Advanced variants may integrate imaging seekers for terminal homing, enabling identification and precise aim point engagement. 
The vehicle's structure and thermal shielding are engineered to survive high, dynamic reentry, and terminal maneuvers while maintaining payload integrity. Modular mission software allows pre-programmed waypoints, altitude changes, and terminal maneuvers to optimize impact angle and approach vector for maximum effect against selected target types. Public reporting suggests modular payload bays and flexible mission programming to adapt to diverse target types. Size and weight trade offs were balanced to allow road mobility while retaining range and accuracy. Thermal and structural design choices reduce signature and improve reliability across flight phases. Operators receive configurable mission files enabling pre-programmed flight paths and terminal profiles. Guidance and targeting are central to LaRa's effectiveness. By employing layered navigation, high quality INS for continuity and satellite navigation for drift correction, the missile maintains high precision over long distances. In contested environments where satellite signals may be degraded by jamming or spoofing, the system's reliance on robust INS and redundant sensors preserves acceptable accuracy Advanced configurations can incorporate terrain contour matching, imaging infrared seekers, or electro-optical correlation in the terminal phase to autonomously identify the intended aim point. Integration with battlefield networks and real-time intelligence allows for in-flight updates, enabling re-attack or abort if target status changes. This networked targeting capability reduces time to strike and supports dynamic targeting against fleeting or time sensitive targets, improving decision cycles and reducing collateral risk. Redundancy in sensors and adaptive algorithms improves robustness against spoofing and jamming attempts. Advanced models probably incorporate machine, vision aids and scene matching to refine terminal homing. Integration with battlefield networks allows real-time target updates and collaborative engagements. Such features reduce fratricide risk and increase the probability of hitting the intended aim point. Warhead options determine LoRa's tactical role and effects on target. Designers can fit unitary high, explosive warheads for blast fragmentation effects against soft or dispersed targets, delayed fuse penetrators for reinforced structures and bunkers, or specialized payloads engineered to degrade infrastructure. Warhead choice balances lethality, weight, and required stand off distance so that the missile remains within mobility and range constraints. For high value hardened targets, penetration aids and delayed fusing raise the likelihood of internal structural damage for area disruption. Airburst fuses maximize fragmentation coverage. Modeling of blast shrapnel patterns and careful selection of explosive fill and casing geometry help optimize effect while mitigating collateral harm where possible. Fusing sophistication, impact delayed or air burst modes allows mission planners to tailor effects precisely to the target set. Warhead design is optimized for blast fragmentation effect, delayed detonation, or shape charges depending on desired effect. Engineers balance explosive mass with penetration aids like hardened noses or precursors. Blast and fragmentation patterns are modeled to minimize collateral damage while ensuring mission success. Careful fusing options enable air burst, delayed, or impact detonation tailored to target vulnerability. Mobility and deployment doctrine are critical to keeping launchers survivable and operationally flexible. Lore A is designed to be road, transportable, and rapidly deployable from dispersed sites, allowing operators to employ shoot and scoot tactics that reduce exposure to counterstrikes. Units can operate from hardened but simple launch positions or from quickly prepared points that complicate adversary targeting. Emphasis on mobility demands streamlined logistics, secure command and control, and quick mission planning cycles to synchronize launches with ISR assets and deconfliction procedures. Camouflage decoys and emission control reduce signature during transit and pre-launch. Training emphasizes rapid emplacement, brief launch windows, and coordinated withdrawal to avoid counter-battery or retaliatory strikes. 
Logistics doctrine emphasizes dispersed logistics nodes and secure command and control to sustain operations. Camouflage decoys and electronic deception help protect launch groups from surveillance. Operators undergo training to deploy, aim, and execute missions with tight timing and coordination. Rules of engagement emphasize minimizing civilian risk and ensuring legal compliance. Operational employment of LARA centers on missions where standoff precision is preferred over manned uh, aircraft or where cruise missile inventories are constrained. Scenarios include time, sensitive strikes on command nodes, interdiction of reinforcement corridors, preemptive strikes on key infrastructure, or suppression of integrated air defenses to clear corridors for follow-on operations. Its road mobile nature makes it useful for surprise or coercive signaling. Demonstrating capability without committing air assets can influence adversary behavior and political calculus. While many operational details remain classified, the public scenarios point to low RA as a tool for calibrated escalation, a means to threaten high value targets with reduced exposure. Training and rehearsal with simulated targeting scenarios hone decision making under pressure. Mission planners weigh collateral risk, timing, and escape routes for follow on actions. Use of forward observers and integrated ISR improves target confirmation and battle damage assessment. Coordinated operations with air and naval assets expand options for layered multi-domain effects. Strategically, the existence of a mobile, long-range precision ground strike system alters deterrence relationships and operational planning for both operator and adversary. For the operator, LARA augments air power by adding an option that is harder to attribute to tactical air sorties and can be used when air corridors are contested. For potential adversaries, it forces investments in early warning, hardened infrastructure, and distributed redundancy to reduce single point vulnerabilities. Export and proliferation of such capabilities can shift regional power balances by providing stand off strike capacity to third parties raising arms control and regional stability concerns. Diplomacy, export controls, and allied consultations play important roles in mitigating destabilizing outcomes. Regionally, deployment can force adversaries to allocate resources to defense, reducing their offensive capacity elsewhere. Export controls and political sensitivities govern who may obtain such capability. Diplomacy must account for the destabilizing potential of long-range strike proliferation. Strategic signaling with such systems carries risks as well as deterrent benefits. No weapon system is invulnerable, and LoRa faces technical and operational countermeasures that adversaries can employ, early warning networks, integrated air defense systems, and layered missile defense architectures can detect and attempt interception during mid, course, or terminal phases, though success depends on interceptor coverage and reaction time. Electronic warfare poses a particular challenge for satellite-assisted guidance by degrading or spoofing signals. Resilient INS and alternative terminal seekers mitigate some of that risk. Hardening of critical nodes, redundancy, and rapid recovery plans reduce the strategic payoff of any successful strike. Mobility and emission discipline raise the cost of detection for adversaries, but pattern analysis and persistent ISR can eventually compromise launcher concealment. Defensive investments like dispersed infrastructure and mobile backups reduce the value of any single strike. Electronic warfare, decoys, and redundancy complicate an attacker's targeting calculus. Effective civil defense and redundancy planning blunt the operational impact of successful strikes. Designers continue improving resilience and counter countermeasure capabilities to stay ahead of defenses. Lower A and systems like it prompt legal and ethical deliberation alongside technical evolution. Precision weapons increase options for discriminating strikes but they also raise accountability questions regarding target verification, proportionality, and post-strike assessment, civilian harm, misidentification, 
or cascading infrastructure damage remain central concerns that require robust rules of engagement, thorough intelligence vetting, and transparent post-action reviews where practicable. On the technological front, future iterations may emphasize improved seekers, lower signature profiles, extended range via advanced materials, and tighter integration with real-time ISR and battle networks to enable collaborative targeting and reduce decision timelines. Policymakers must pair capability development with doctrine oversight and legal frameworks that limit escalation risk and safeguard non-combatants. Operators and policymakers face hard choices about proportionality, risk of escalation, and transparency. International law requires care in target selection and post-strike investigations when civilian harm occurs. Future trajectories may include longer range, improved stealth, and tighter integration with real-time intelligence. As technology evolves, continuous oversight and ethical debate remain essential to responsible deployment. If you found this breakdown useful, smash the like button, subscribe for more in-depth defense tech analysis, and ring the bell to get notified. Got a question or a topic you want next? Drop it in the comments and I'll cover it in the next episode.